Good afternoon and welcome to 2022 and welcome to Catch and Fire Ministry this Sunday afternoon, the second and first Sunday of 2022. We thank God that we are here. Let's just want to say like David, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh how excellent is thy name in all the earth, earth who has set thy glory above all the heavens. And we know it's by the grace of God while we are here. We are so thankful that we made it over. Through it all, we have come, we have come this far by faith. We can say how we have overcome. We thank him for keeping us in 2021 to tribulations, trial, testings. But we are victorious. And in this 2022, we are expecting more victories in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for joining us this afternoon. And let us go as we open up worship in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we praise you, we magnify you. Your name is glorious in all the earth. We thank you, God, that you are so wonderful. You are so loving. You are so kind. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your goodness in 2021, Father. And Lord, we give you even thanks for bringing us here on the threshold of 2022, God. Lord, we know, God, that you who made the heavens, you who made the earth is with us today, Father. So Lord, we ask, oh God, that as we come to this forum this afternoon, Father, as we open in this year with this message, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit presence will be all over this ministry, Father, all over the airways, God. That, Lord, your people, oh God, who too in our God, now or later, God, that your Holy Spirit will take the message to their hearts and to their spirit, oh God, and they will respond in a positive way, oh God, knowing, oh God, that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. We thank you and we praise you. We ask that you will bless everything that is said this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen and amen. Thank God. At this time, we're going to begin with our worship with Minister Black. Praise the Lord, everyone, for he is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for letting us Amen. to be allowed to see the dawning of another year. And Lord, we just say, welcome, 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 Lord Jesus. I may be broken, but you are welcome. I need your healing and say you're welcome. Oh, I know you're able in spite of how I feel and I'm depending on your word revealed. Oh, Lord, I may be broken, but you are welcome. I need your healing, and I say you're welcome. Lord, I know you're able in spite of how I feel and I'm depending on your word revealed. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Have your way. Oh, Lord, you are welcome. You are welcome. Oh, Lord, you are welcome. You're welcome in this place. 
I need your healing. And I say that you are welcome. I know you're able in spite of how I feel. And I am depending on your word revealed. For you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Oh, Jesus, have your way. Oh, Lord, you are welcome in this new year you are welcome in this broken vessel you are welcome have your way oh lord you are welcome Jesus, you are welcome. You are welcome. Oh Lord, have your way. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place. And feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Oh, you're welcome, Jesus. We need more of you. Your presence, Lord. Oh, let us become more aware of your goodness. Let us experience the glory of your presence. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome, to be overcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. God flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts are long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. For you are welcome. You are welcome. Lord, you are welcome. Have your Oh, Jesus, you are welcome. You are welcome, Lord, you are welcome, have 
Dios. Oh, Jesus, help your way. Oh, Lord, have your way. We need you, Lord, have your way. Oh, Lord, have your way. Hallelujah, Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you into this service, Lord Jesus. We welcome you into our broken vessels, oh Lord. We welcome you, Lord Jesus, to have your way. Show your weight, Lord Jesus. Throw your weight around, Lord Jesus. Welcome. We welcome you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, be lifted up the everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who's mighty to save. We welcome him. We thank him that he's with us in 2022. We thank our sister for ministering to us in such a mighty, powerful way. We thank for the Holy Spirit presence. We thank you because without the Holy Spirit presence, our worship would be in vain. Our coming together would be in vain. As Moses always said, if your spirit go not with me, I am not going. And we are saying, if your spirit is not with us in this forum, we are not going to be here. Because it is because of him, in him we live, we move, and have our being. So we give him glory, we give him honor, we welcome him. Come in, Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. At this time, we continue with the scripture reading by your sister, Makeda. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Samuel 7, verses 1 through 17. So the men of Kiriath Jehiram came and took up the ark of the Lord. They brought it to Ebenab's house on the hill and consecrated Eleazar his son to guard the ark of the Lord. The ark remained at Kiriath Jehiram a long time, 20 years in all. Samuel subdues the Philistines at Mizpah. Then all the people of Israel turned back to the Lord. So Samuel said to all the Israelites, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and the asterisks and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away their balls and Ashtoreth, and serve the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Assemble all Israel at Mizpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled at Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. On that day they fasted, and there they confessed, We have sins against the Lord. Now Samuel was serving as leader of Israel at Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hands of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and sacrificed it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew to, the, to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer, saying, These far, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they stopped invading Israel's territory. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The towns from Ekron to Gath that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to Israel and Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the hands of the Philistines. And there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. 
Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. From year to year, he went on a circuit from Bethel to Gilgal to Mizpah, judging Israel in all those places. But he always went back to Ramah, where his home was, and there he also held court for Israel. And he built an altar there to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. He the two has the Lord help us. He's, and we shout on that one. Amen. We know that we, it's because of the Lord's goodness and his mercy why we are still here on the land of the living. And we can do nothing but give him praise. We can do nothing but raise an altar unto him, an altar of praise and thanksgiving. Amen. At this time, we continue with our worship with our sister. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I want to apologize for last week's technical difficulties. So I'm going to redo <laughs> that song again that you all missed, hallelujah. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing, let the whole earth sing. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing, let the whole earth sing. Oh, there is a place when we can see his face changed in his presence, touched by his grace. Oh, there is a sound, I hear it all around. Worship is rising and people crying out. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. I want to sing a new song, shouting out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. Never the same. He has taken my chains. There's freedom. In Jesus, power to save, there is none name like no other name. Let's shout it out, oh, shout it out. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. 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 I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. Oh, shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. 
Oh, I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. I want to sing a new song, shout it out louder than before. Let the whole earth sing. Let the whole earth sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the whole earth sing. You know, it says the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. And we look at our lives and it seems like, well, there's nothing new about it. We wake up. We breathe, we eat, we drink, we go back to sleep, we wake up. But when we consider the goodness of God, we recognize that his mercies are new every morning. And just like his mercies are new every morning, our praise to him should be new. We should always have a new song. Even he say he gives a song in the midnight hour when you're down and low and you seems like, oh, I can't get out of here. Then a song comes into you because he always gives a song in the night. So you got to sing that song. Whatever the song the Lord gives you, keep singing it unto him. And he's going to rescue you, bring you up, give you the victory, victory in whatever situation you're in. If you have victory, he's going to give you more victory. If you're down and you need victory, he's going to pull you up and give you the victories. But you have to sing that new song unto him. Amen and amen. So we thank our sister for a beautiful time of worship. We give God praise for her ministry. We pray that the Lord will continue to anoint her voice, her spirit, and her heart to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen and amen. And we thank God for bringing us this far in our worship. Amen. <laughs> it's so beautiful to know that we are here in 2022. First time we are here to present the word to you. And it gave me great pleasure and honor on this first Sunday of, nine, of 2022 to present to you our speaker, Pastor Dr. Novella Springett. Praise God, praise God. Uh, welcome to 2022 with Catching Fire Ministries. I will be speaking as the Lord has led me hitherto as the Lord has helped us. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 7 to 14. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we pray that you will anoint the word, that it will come forth with power, that chains will be broken, that you'll minister grace to the hearers. So we need a word from you. We're grateful that we're here in 2022, lifting up holy hands unto you. And we thank you and we praise you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're in the book of 1 Samuel. And 1 Samuel introduces us to when Israel gained a monarchy. And this happened in the 11th century BC. 1 Samuel ends with the last two judges, Eli, who was a failure, and Samuel, who was a success. And it also introduces the first two kings of Israel, Saul, who was a failure, and David, who was a success. And throughout the book of 1 Samuel, Samuel, which it takes his name from, is shown as who he is, prophet, priest, judge, kingmaker. And so we come to chapter seven and to give you background you have to understand that when eli was in charge he let his sons go crazy and they were, were at war with the philistines and they believed that they could just bring the ark of the lord into battle and the, the god would forgive all the nonsense they've been doing and they would just have a great victory instead god ignored them because that cannot happen you have to live right all to the Old Testament, all to the New Testament. So they lost the Ark of the Covenant to the Philistines. And the Philistines were so arrogant, they put the Ark of God next to their fake god, Dagon. Dagon was the god of grain and Baal was supposed to be his son. So they came the next day and Dagon is on his face worshiping the true God. And they didn't want to believe it, so they put him back where he was. When they came the next day, his head and his hands were gone in the doorway and just the body was once again in front of the ark, worshipping. And while the, the temple of Dagon was in Ashdod, they started having tumors, people were dying, 
So they had a bright idea to send it down to Gat. And got to Gat, same thing happened. Tumors showed up, people started dying, and the people of Gat hustled the ark over to the city of Ekron. And Ekron was like, no, don't bring it here. We don't want it. And this plague followed. So seven months, they had the ark of the Lord in Philistines territory. So they came with a bright idea that they would send it back, but they wanted, they said, the one that's gonna send it back, they made some golden offerings to appease, appease God. And they said, just to make sure, we're gonna take two cows who just gave birth and they're still feeding their calves. And these cows have never ever dragged the calf. No one has ever put a yoke on them. So we're going to put them and see what happened. Because what should have happened is that the cows will break free and go look for their calves. Because they want them to, instead the cows took a straight road straight into Israelite territory and stopped in, this, in Bet Shemesh. And Bet Shemesh did the right thing. They initially, they anointed, they consecrated someone to look after it, but some nosy people decided that they were going to have a peek inside. And they winded up dead. So they got real serious. They say they called and the people, the men of Kiriat Jerim to come and get it and take it to the house of Binadab. We believe Abinadab must have been of descended from Aaron or Levite, so he would know how to maintain the ark and show the and they consecrated his son Eliezer to look after it. And the scripture. Verse 2 is very, sounds very sad, and the ark remained there for 20 long years. Israel didn't know what to do with the ark. They left it in somebody's house for 20 long years. And this brings us to um, Samuel, who called on Israel. We haven't heard anything from Samuel for, um, from since around chapter four, because he was still a boy in the temple. And then uh, when Eli and his sons were doing crazy things, and he had been dedicated to the Lord by his mother. And she said, when I get him, I'm going to give him back. And she brought him to the temple to be consecrated to the Lord. And uh, Verses 3 to 6, I'm speaking on 7 to 4. So in verse 3 to 6, Samuel re-emerges and tells them to put away the estranged God, the Baals and the Astaroths, and to understand who Baal was. Baal was supposed to be the God of the weather, and he could make you rich, and he could um, give you a good harvest, and he was also fertility. And he used to be linked up with Ashtoreth and Ashtoreth, which were the female gods. Um, and they were supposed to be make you fertile. Uh, in fact, the, what you call it, the archaeologists have unearthed in Palestine from the same period of time, numerous plaques of these gods, the Ashtoreth that are mentioned here in, in, in 1 Samuel. But Baal, Ashtoreth and Ashtoreth, Asherat used to have depraved sexual rituals. In fact, when Hosea and, uh, and um, Jeremiah speak of Baal, they always use the adjective that shameful God, Baal, because what they did was totally inappropriate. And so for a long time, while the, the ark was up, up there by Abinadab, Israel was just doing his own thing. But Samuel emerges as this man of God and call on them to put away these strange gods. And he promised them, because the Philistines had their had a like a knife at their throat. They just had to work to maintain the Philistines. And he said, I, God will set you free. Put away these powerless, shameful, work nothing God. If you will put them away, God will hear and deliver. So first they did the, everyone put away their personal gods. And then he called for Israel to come to Mizpah 
for prayer and fasting and, consec and consecration. He calling them, they said that they were pouring out water. And they pour water to signify that they're pouring out their souls before God. That they that this is they can't cry like this, but this is what they're implying. They wish they could cry like this to have the to say that they're sorry, they're repenting, and they want to come back to the one true God. And that brings us to verse 7. Where the Philistines heard that the Israelites were assembled at Mizpah. And they thought that this was a great time to take down, take them down, because they're all in one place. And we're told that there were five rulers of the Philistines. So they got together, they strategized, and they said, okay, these idiots, it's easier to kill you if you're all together. So we'll just go up to Mizpah and take them all out. So they're arrayed in battle. And the Israelites, when they heard it, they were afraid because they had just gotten a beat down when they had the wrong attitude. You know, like I said, we like to believe we say a magic prayer and so we can do whatever we want. God has never been into magic. You have to live right. So they were afraid. Now they have been humbled. It was a day of fasting. No one was eating. They were fasting and praying and humbling themselves before God. They were in the right attitude. They were afraid of the Philistines because they knew that they couldn't defeat them in their own strength. They now knew that they didn't have the power and the authority to just stand up and say, oh, I'm going to fight these people and defeat them. So they were afraid and they said the right thing. They said to Samuel, don't stop crying out to God for us, that he may rescue us from the hands of the Philistines. This is the only thing that works. You call on the name of the Lord because he's a prayer hearing and answering God. And when he appeared to Solomon after the dedication of the temple, he said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. That was a promise he made to some to Solomon after he had shown up with his Shekinah glory at the dedication. He was telling Solomon, there's always going to be a way for you to come back to me. There, you know, people like to say, oh, I'm cutting them off. I'll never talk to them again. That's not how God does things. He said, humble yourself and pray, please, so that I can heal the land. He's willing to deliver the land. But we got to repent of our wicked ways. Humble ourselves, fast, pray. There's nothing that God can't do. COVID keeps showing back up like he ruled, they rule, he ruled the world. This demon, he got a new variant, a new name. But we need to do what God is calling us to do for the land to be healed. You know, mm. last week it came to me forcefully. You're not praying enough. You know, we need to fast and pray more. There's healing available, but God is not just going to drop it down on our head. And it's more than a COVID. If you're struggling with your debt, you're struggling with your help. Healing is promised to those who will hear, who will turn to God and repent. It's a promise. You know, we want to do whatever we want and then ask God to just bless what we're doing. We got to turn from our wicked ways. And the, the idols, we knew what they were, then they gave them big name, you know. Baal, Ashtoreth, but there's still an idol. Your job is still an idol if you will lie and steal to keep it. You know, your bank account is an idol. If you think that you could, you don't need God because you got enough money to cover everything. Your family is an idol if you will give up God for them. Everything that you could think about that is preventing you from worshiping God all out, that's an idol. Friends, family, job, money, connections are important. I know somebody who has money and has, has the presidency or the prime minister's here. That's got to go. Those idols got to go. They've got to go if we're going to walk before God. If we're going to, the Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. The things that we want. But we can't get them until we get into the right place with God. 
And he says, Samuel took a suckling lamb and sacrificed it. You know, to sacrifice it as a burnt offering to the Lord. You have to cut the throat, drain the blood, cut it up into pieces, and then burn the carcass. And this meant that you're saying, this is what should fall on us. But instead, as a substitutionary sacrifice, we are offering this lamb to you, Lord. We, we know this is what we deserve. But we're asking of you to forgive us. And this is what Jesus did when he came, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. Worthy is the Lamb. He hung on a cross that we wouldn't have to live in sin anymore. We're no longer slaves to sin. We just got to walk into that. We're no longer under the dominion of the enemy. Satan has no power over us. But it can only happen when we walk in right with God. And the Samuel cried out to God and to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and God answered him. And you know, what struck me is that they could see the Philistines and the arrogance ready, sure that they were going to kill them. And Solomon didn't say, oh, hurry up, get your armor, let's get dressed. Instead, he fought the battle in the spiritual. He, he, he offered a lamb and said, Lord, I'm calling on you. You are the true strength. You're the true Adonai. And he said, all throughout the Bible, Samuel was a man of prayer. And if we go through the Bible, the ones who did great escapes God, all through history, they were people of prayer. They knew how to pray. And this is what God is calling on us in 2022. COVID is not going to go just because it feels like it. It's going to go by prayer. We got to rise up and pray. Chains need to be broken. And it's only to pray and fasting that this thing is going to go. You know, this is how God is calling on us for 2022. Make a change. We've been taking this lightly. There's too much debt going on. There's too much disaster. Every time you look up, something is wrong. But we need to be, be promised if we'll turn from our wicked ways and humble ourselves. Too many arrogant people, too many big names. Everybody has a name that lift them up high. Humility is what God is looking for. To today, the Jews said that Moses is the greatest prophet they ever had. He gave us Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And the Bible says he was the most humble man on the face of the earth. No one else could say when God, that God came down and talked with them. And when he said, show me your glory, he didn't say, no one else saw God's glory. And what was his trademark? Humility. And that's what Samuel knew. He called on Israel, they had been enslaved with the Philistines. They had been in bondage. And he said, humble yourselves and pray and fast. That's what we call it. We need to know that it can come. It's not of us. Whatever you need today, whatever you're asking God for, whoever, whatever chains need to be broken, whoever's neck need, need to come off your neck, humble yourself and pray. God will hear from heaven and he will heal the land. He's begging for the opportunity to heal the land. But he's a man of his word. So it's got to come the way he says. And while Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near. And he, if we don't hear that Samuel stopped sacrificing to go and say, let's hurry up. We're running out of time. They're coming for us. He kept on sacrificing. Because the battle is fought in the spiritual first. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That person you think is the enemy is not the enemy. It's the devil in them that is the enemy. Mm -hmm. We are up against spiritual warfare. You know, rulers, authorities, spiritual wickedness in, hell, in high places. There's a lot of that. And Paul's... Starts out that chapter said, pray in the spirit on all occasions with 
pray all your prayers in the spirit. And he said, do not be anxious in Philippians. Do not be anxious for anything, but make your request known to God. <clears throat> and Samuel was living this out. He didn't change his pace. He didn't get scared. He didn't get hurry up. He fought the battle in the spiritual on his knees. And that's where we got to go because we, I know I'm guilty. We like to get up and start doing things that we haven't consulted God. We have an answer God wants us to do. And that's what needs to be done. And we need to stop taking advice from people, don't read the Bible, don't pray, just because you have their telephone number, you're calling them, asking them for advice. You, we need to turn back to prayer and get pour out our lives as an offering to God so that the Philistine can be taken out of our lives. So we can no longer slaves to sin. That's what we're supposed to walk in authority. The devil is supposed to be running from us, not standing in our face, laughing at us and saying what the plans they have for us. But it's prayer and fasting that will take us there. There's nothing more powerful. John Wesley started the Methodist Church and he insisted that if you're a minister, you had to fast at least two days a week. And his church is still standing in the Methodist Church. The work he did has lasted hundreds of years. In fact, he, they said that he pulled England out of poverty because he got so many people to stop drinking, start coming to church. He did like Samuel, he rode his horse in a circuit, ministering and insisting that people fasted and prayed and gave up their wicked ways. I'm told, I'm told that he would have a meeting, a, a midweek meeting, and he said, the Bible said, we must confess our sins one to another. And if you were dragging down the name, if you were beating on your wife, in the, uh, drinking, he kicked you out. He was the same because your money is coming. If I can't do without this money. We could do without anybody's money because the cattle on a thousand hills belong to our God. And he said, be holy, I am holy. We don't need anybody to keep us going but the Lord. And if we will stand for holiness, then a change will come. Because you won't preach the word. This is why people are getting beaten down. Why are they still in chains? Fornication is still a sin. Checking up with somebody is still wrong. We act like it's no law, it's, no, it's acceptable. Where, when, and how. It's the one sin that the Bible talks the most about. Paul says this is a sin that involves the body. I know people preaching and the, 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 the worship leader living with a man or the keyboard is living with his woman and everybody knows. I remember Pastor Brown coming into the church one Sunday morning, pointing somebody out the pulpit, saying, how dare you sleep with that man last night and come, in, come into the pulpit. But nobody living and walking like that anymore. Holiness unto the Lord should be a watchword and song. And the scripture said that day, the Lord thundered with a loud thunder against the prison and threw them into a panic and they were routed before the Israelites. When they call on God, he showed up and he showed out. And the, 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 the scholars say that Baal was supposed to be the God of thunder. They were showing with lightning in his hand. So he showed who was the real God of thunder. He came with thunder and he knocked them out. They were so scared that they started running away. In the knees of the Philistines, the five kings came up. And what got them to run prayer? Offering themselves before God. And these Israelites who had been beaten down for so long got up and chased after them and were able to kill them. I, they said they don't know where, the, where this place is, but God. Victory was yours. Victory is ours. We serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. 
There's no power in other name but the name of Jesus. All these other religions, they won't say the name Jesus. You hear them say Jehovah or God. Because the devil don't want them to say it. Because from the time they say Jesus, the devil's going to have to get up and run out of where they are. Victory is ours. 2022 is not going down like 2021 and 2020. Today, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over all the plans of the enemy. And we claim the victory. And we're going to do what we need to do. We're going to confess our faults. We're going to fast. And we're going to pray. And people who are not bound in sin, they're being held captive by the forces of the enemy. And no devil in hell is supposed to conquer us. I have taught you over us. I need to be in a place where the devil get up and run when they see us coming. Because Jesus is walking with us. Nothing good comes easy. You know, calling on everybody out here. Let us turn to God. Not about us. Forget the competition. Who sings better? Who preach better? Who cares? The word is preached. That's all that matters. That's a source of some preaching it out of animosity. Who cares? As long as it's preached. When, when Moses was prophesying with Joshua and other people started to prophesy, Joshua was saying, let them shut up. And, Paul said, and Moses said, wish more people wish more people be in the spirit. This is not an exclusive club. God don't have no 10 people who you want to use and nobody else. That's the life of the pit of hell. Everybody is a minister. We need to get into the situation that God wants of us. I am, I am blessed. You know, I must say it every day. I see him son, thinking low. God didn't promise me tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow holds. None of us knows. I hear people making plans. But what we know that our time are in God's hands. And while we have breath and strength, let's give him our all. He deserves it. He deserves the glory. The four and twenty elders bow down and cast a crown. Worthy is the Lamb. The word worthy to receive honor and power and glory. That's who we're talking about. None of the other gods are worthy. The worthless, the fail, the whatever they have going. Let's call on the name of the Lord. In Genesis, from the beginning, prayer is everything. You see, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Prayer is everything. You know, when Martin Luther came with the Reformation, they say he would spend two hours in prayer every day. And if things were going wrong, he would spend more hours. He said, because he needed to pray more. We've forgotten about prayer. We've got to get back to it. And then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shem. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer translates the stone of help. And he needed the nation to remember that it was when they were on their knees praying and fasting, when they looked vulnerable. They so went on my knees, I'm taller than trees. They were actually at their strongest because they were looking to the only help that exists. David says, all of my help, I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hitherto has the Lord brought us. I went back over my mind, so many people have seen die. 
I'm a soul of this bitch. That angel has been reaping like crazy. Here too has the Lord brought us. We're here in our right mind. We're here, we have the activity of all ends. None but nobody brought us here but the Lord. It wasn't our finances, it wasn't our job, it wasn't our family, our friends. Let's raise our Ebenezer. As we look back and remember what the Lord has done for us. I look back and I remember where God has brought me from. My life is an impossible story. To come out of stone hill below Lord's mulling you to where I am today. In a two has the Lord brought us. I did not need for the Lord on my side. No, may Israel say. We give you the glory. We raise our Ebenezer. We all have something to be grateful for. See the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He's given me beauty for ashes, joy for mourning. He's walking with me and he's keeping me and he's keeping everyone who trusts in him. We can say like David, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid. I feel evil. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, who reigns in victory. Jehovah Rapha, healer, is with us. And the scripture says, so the Philistines are subdued, and all the true sons of fight to me. Because Samuel can pray, like how we're supposed to pray. Like how Paul prayed, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. May the Lord recompense him according to his deeds. There's no blessing in this, it's warfare. Because they need to know who God is. You can't ask blessings for people trying to kill you. That's nonsense. David knew how to pray. He said that they might disappear off the face. And we pray the word to say, that the hole that they dig for us, they're supposed to fall into it. Because that's what the word promised. We walk on these promises. And Samuel was a man of prayer. It's documented. And then the verse says that all the town, Ekron, Gat, that they had captured with the sword. And the Amorites who used to side with the Philistines against the Israelites. When they saw that the Philistines were constantly getting beat down, they became Israel's friends and fought and, and sided with them. And this is what happens when we turn it over to God. Restoration. They got back what the enemy had stolen. And that's the promise he's given. He's given us. If God wants to give us back what we have lost, it could be our confidence. It could be our reputation. The devil is a full-time liar running around saying things about us that's not true. And God wants to set us up and redeem us once more. Restoration. The song says, what was meant to break you actually made you. Write my story again, Lord. Your God of a more than a second chance. Your God of multiple choices, multiple chances. And we're asking you to write our story again. We're asking for chains to be broken. No, we don't want the devil has no dominion over us. We ask him to walk in victory. That the Philistines will go back. <laughs> The Philistines have been coming after us for so many years. That God will do a thunder and break them up. Call forth the little ones in the name of Jesus. I call for healing in 2022. I call for the new season in all of our lives. As we rededicate ourselves 
to prayer, to fasting, and to humility, so that he may be glorified in our lives, so that the great work that he has begun in us can be completed, so that we can stand before him. Amen and amen and amen. What a message. A message for every situation. Wherever you find yourself in life, there's a message in this for you. We thank God. As the Israelites say, here I raise my Ebenezer. He the two has the Lord brought us. And we too, we know that prayer changes things. Without prayer, God does not move. When they call up, is they call upon the name of the Lord and he shall deliver you. Yeah, and that's what the children of Israel did. Even when they were in battle, they turned to the prophet Samuel and said, continue to do what you're doing for us. Continue to sacrifice, continue to intercede for us while we are fighting. God is hearing your prayer and giving us the victory. And God heard Samuel's prayer. And the Israelites were able to overcome the Philistines. And so too, we as children of God today, you know, we are always in a battle because the enemy never stops coming. He is the accuser of the brethren. And you know, <laughs> when that, uh, the, the devil is always at the throne of God. <laughs> we think that the devil is just in the earth, but he's always at the throne of God. He, if, to, to accuse somebody, you have to complain to somebody. And when the enemy is, is accusing us, we have to go before the throne also and present the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the only victory that we have, you know? So we can continuously pray, and the Father says, whatsoever we desire, when we pray, we must believe that we have it and it shall be granted unto us. So today, as we, con as we begin this new year on this wonderful, great word, may the Holy Spirit plant this word in your heart. May it be planted in fertile ground. May it bear root, spring up, and bear fruit and that the fruits will remain. We call you with us to pray out this year that whatever our situation in life is, that we would have the victory. 
that we will continue calling on the name of the Lord. And even when we have the victory, we still have to con continue praying to him so that we can continue hold on to our victory. Because some of us could lose our joy easily because as soon as we see the victory, we stop shouting. But we have to continue because we have to overcome. We have to persevere. We have to take over. And we need to take over the world for Jesus. But we have to be in the spirit. As our sisters, we have to live in the spirit. Yeah, everything has to be done in the spirit. That is Samuel had just go up and say, oh, I'm prophet, I'm king. I'm going to tell you, just do what you, you continue fighting. Who said they would have had the victory? You know, but Samuel know what it is to pray. Samuel know what it is to sacrifice. Samuel know what is it to call upon the name of the Lord. And that is why they had the victory. And we too shall have the victory. We continue to persevere and to live and to call upon the name of the Lord. At this time, we're going to have a song by your sister. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are my strength. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches to me. You are my hope, hope like no other, hope like no other reaches to me. You are my hope. Hope like no other, hope like no other reaches to me in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up, you lift me up. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up, unfailing love, stronger than mountains, deeper than oceans reaches to me. Unfailing love stronger than mountains, deeper than oceans it reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, it reaches to me, it reaches to me. It reaches to me. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father and God, we thank you, God, that your word said, O oh God, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Father, we thank you, God, for the word that has preached this afternoon. 
We thank you, O oh God, that your word, O oh God, has gone forth. And we pray, O oh God, as you said, O oh God, that your word shall not return unto your void, but it shall accomplish that which is sent, Father. So, Lord, we know, O oh God, that your word, O oh God, is going to reach the hearts and the spirit of those who need it the most, Father, especially those who have not yet come to know you, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that, Lord, this word, O oh God, that they recognize, O oh God, that there's no other name that has salvation but the name of the Lord. So we pray this afternoon, Father, that they will call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. And, Lord, we as Christians, Father, we we know, God, that no matter what we go through, oh God, we know, God, that when we call upon your name, oh God, that the enemy has to go for us. Lord, we ask, oh God, that Lord, you would revive us today, Father. Revive our heart. Revive our spirit, oh God. The Lord, oh God, as the word said, oh God, that we, your people who are called by your name, if we will just humble ourselves, seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, Father, that, Lord, you will hear from heaven and you will forgive our sin and heal the land, Father. Father, we pray, O oh God, that, Lord, you would honor this word this afternoon, Father, God, that, Lord, we'll see the victory in your word, O oh God. We'll see, O oh God, the overcoming power by your word, Father. So we thank you, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to bless us, that you continue to pour your Holy Spirit and your anointing and your increase upon this ministry. We pray, dear God, that, Lord, you will just continue to favor us with your grace and your mercies, God. We ask all this in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen and amen and amen. At this time, you're going to have the benediction and the notice it. Physical location. It's already in the move. Spirit, and it's going to come into effect in the physical. Truly do that in my spirit if you wish to. Heart. Benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you amen. have a great day. amen things you to close of relationship with him may you know his power and his glory and his blessings in jesus name we pray have a good week as well Bless your name, Jesus. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Hallelujah. Catch a fire. Catch a fire, Jesus. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Pound them with the holy ghost.